Hey, it's Chris Luigi Games. Let's do this. So first one up on the new setup in the new computer, a little bit of everything. So I've got it going. We're going to see how this goes. We're going to do this as a test run. We're going to see where the board game news has fallen this week. And what do you need to know? Because there's a lot of stuff going on and there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Well, a fair amount because... You know, it is what it is. It's only board game news, folks. But the best stop, the most complete stop, and most interesting stuff that you need to know all in a short form summary. Let's do this. So hopefully, this will also be high resolution. So hopefully, we can get the party going here. Let's do this. First up, in case you missed this, yes, Uthia has been re-resurrected. Resurrected? Re-resurrected. Whatever. But the most important thing that you need to know about this is right here, right? Steamforge Games is the one doing it. If we go back over to the Steamforge game page itself, they acquired Uthia. They have a long-term partnership with Daia Games. And we're going to see what all they had in store for us on the GameFound page when it originally launched and failed to fund, although it was funded and just didn't get enough and they canceled early. And so we're going to sort of see. Now, this is a solo, competitive, and cooperative game in the lines of more of a Mage Knight. It's got a wider mass appeal than the general audience, and so you can go over to the GameFound page. But the interesting thing, like I mentioned, is it's not on GameFound right? They're going to be launching it on Kickstarter because Kickstarter is where uh, <laughs> Steamforge has done all their projects. So that's an interesting twist. I wonder if there was any part of the negotiation with that. Now you're going to get a reprint. You're also going to get all of the new stuff that was planned here as well. So things have been going for a hot price on the secondary market. I had someone literally offer me a copy of uh, Legendary 2 Pledge. I forget which one that was uh, for the original, but for like $550 just a couple days prior to this launching or being announced, I mean. So things were just getting jacked up in terms of price. I mean, the all-in gameplay content wasn't even that much, but you had people literally getting twice the price of what this new one is going to be. But again, the question is really gonna be, does this reprint hold these prices? How different are we going to see? Are we going to see a funding goal that is about the same? Are they going to put some of those disclaimers out there in the original part? Because they said that they needed what? Something like 5,000 backers, which was you know a considerable amount more money. And that's really just the question of what we're gonna see from that aspect of things. So it's gonna be interesting though, because it launches on July 26th not giving you a lot of time to budget, not giving you a lot of notice, uh, literally about three and a half weeks at the time of me filming this. So there you go. So next up, this one needs no introduction. In case you're not familiar, we are going over to Stonemaier Games and we are getting a new Wingspan expansion. So clearly, if you are a Wingspan junkie, you want the Asian birds. This is all about the Asian birds, all about the Asian birds. I got nothing else to go on in this sense. The only question is, is it going to offer something new or different mechanically? But how many layers can you build on a game like this without overcomplicating it or without making it too, uh, you know, away from what the actual appeal was in the first place? Or is it just going to offer variations of what we've already seen in the past? It's going to be quarter four and they're gonna reveal apparently one bird per month for the pre. And going along with this, they've also previously announced the nesting box, which is basically a big box organizer for all of the stuff that's coming out there. But if you order the nesting box itself, you'll actually get the expansion along with it. Now, again, it says early quarter four, Four. So take that for what you will. That's, you know, October, November, December. So October ish. They haven't revealed the price point. They say as they get closer to that date, they're going to be revealing the price point. And just the question is, do you need more of a good thing? Because this is arguably one of the best sellers of the past decade whether you like it or not. And that's just the truth of the matter. And do you really need a storage for everything else that's out there? That's more of a question for, well, a different sort of crowd. Anyway, what else do we got going on? We got Clank. Clank has just announced, Dire Wolf, that there is going to be a new Catacombs and they're calling it like you've never seen before. Now, does that uh, you know intrigue you? Does that surprise you? Does that really ring true though? That's really the question. And now they're saying this is the team behind Dune Imperium. So, whoa. Oh, that's got a little bit more of a pedigree there. You're going to be going through modular tiles that are revealed as you search for treasure. And who knows what else is going to be there. Fun new mechanics they call ghosts, portals, and way shrines. So it's standalone. And as with the other Clank titles, I would imagine that they're going to be having expansions for this one too, just as they did with the others. So they're going to be compatible with existing expansions and you can enjoy and mix and match however you want. Pre-order is going to be later this year, but that's all of the details we know. Uh, again, 
how many 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 versions of Clank uh, can you go for? And do you need to own some of the other base games if you don't own them already? How is this going to be different? Is this just the best one to get in on? And do you you know, make the other ones obsolete. That's the only question when you produce something like this, and that's where my head goes. So take that for what you will. Okay, take three into the rest of this news video. Look, if you're like me and you were into Need of Valier when it came out, I had this as my number two game of 2020. The problem is it just hasn't gotten to the table a whole lot since then. Now, in between now and then, they've actually announced one previous expansion, adding a little bit more, but now... Towards the end of the year, around Essen, we're going to see a second expansion here, Ida Vol. And so the question is going to be, does this bring it back to prominence that it has sort of gotten overlooked since its initial hype? This innovative auction-style set collection game of dwarves with asymmetric factions where you're going to be set collecting and scoring in various asymmetric manners gives you just a little bit more in terms of monsters, heroes, and now Valkyries that are going to score in different ways in order to, you know, give you more options in case there wasn't enough in the base game originally. One interesting aspect of this is they're going to add a fourth tavern area that is going to give you a new bidding area in the first place. And so the question is going to be, is it more like Isle of Sky expansion number one, Isle of Sky expansion number two, where one, uh, one made it too complicated and convoluted for what it was, but where number two really added a whole lot of value without overcomplicating things in the first place. And so that's why it's really intriguing. Can it just make it a really good game to a wow, I can't get enough of this game because I don't have enough auction mechanic games in my collection in the first place. And so that's the really interesting aspect there. Speaking of expansions, though, we're going to go over to Furnace. Furnace is actually getting an expansion as well. This auction bidding, similar, engine builder, though, in the different aspect where you are literally building buildings. This is expanding into, I, I, this is a new term for me as well, the interbellum of the 20s and the 30s, which is what it was known as. More capitalistic gains and goodness that are going to go along with that. Fifth player ability, as well as specific agents to allow for a better two-player experience, as well as a solo experience, in case you were missing out from that aspect. They say it's potentially modular in nature, but the recommendation straight off the Board Game Geek page is actually to use all of them at once. Buyer beware, but again, is it going to give more shelf life and more table life to a game that may have hit your hotness, hit the table, and then is collecting dust in the recesses of your calyx? We're going to go over here to Twitter because that's where it's been announced is Splendor Duel. A two-player Splendor game, which it says is taking and addressing some of the criticisms that is with Splendor because people are very divisive about Splendor. I personally think it is a great introductory game for my children because it teaches the color matching, it teaches the patterns, it teaches the counting and a little bit of the strategy at the same time because it's not like Furnace. It's not an engine builder. It is an optimization puzzle. And if you treat it like an engine builder, you're going to lose. If you treat it like an optimization puzzle, you will win or do better. And so we're going to be seeing what, uh, you know, Bruno Cathala can do as a two player version of this. And I'm actually relatively intrigued because they say they're going a lot more strategic with this game than the original. They're trying to get away from some of the nature that was thought of in the original in the first place. So I'm intrigued to see what happens with this when it finally comes out. But the problem is we just don't have any, you know, time frame fall ish again probably around essen 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 is what i would imagine at this point but we're going to stay with the theme here of expansions and this one doesn't even have its own board game geek page but devious weasel games has slyly ha huh, devious weasel slyly you see what i did there announced that there will be a expansion for the hit cosmic frogs again one of my top games of 2020 already uh, in 2023, and it's going to be psionics. If you don't know what psionics are, it's basically like telekinesis and the, you know the the use of the mind to do things. And this is a highly underrated game. It's been difficult to get. It's been in and out of print runs, and so it's just a fantastic game. I, I don't again get it played nearly as much as I should, so, sort of a la Nidavellier. But with this, it's not going anywhere in my collection either. The setup is a bit of a bear, but the dynamics and the interactions of uh, supersized galactic 
frogs battling in space cannot be duplicated, replicated, or otherwise imitated elsewhere. And so if you can give me a little bit of something else while maybe addressing some of the issues in the first one, I'm going to be really intrigued to see what Devious Weasel can do from that aspect. Speaking of similar companies, new products, different names, we have Leader Games putting out a game called Ahoy. Now, this is an interesting combination of things. Kyle Farron, again, is doing the art for this. Asymmetric, two to four player, area control, modular, pick up and deliver game? I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I'll give thought to it. It's definitely like Root in the asymmetric area control aspect, but definitely not there in terms of the pick up and deliver. And why am I saying that? Because if you go over to the page here, it says you're either the Union, uh, undersea allies in their arms, uh, fighting to reclaim their home, or you're smugglers, captains uh, who are mavericks trying to run blockades and deliver uh, to, you know, luxury goods to those in need, essentially. Unique, you're making, you're making here a unique Mac full of treasures, wreckage, and currents. Deluxe double layer region tiles. Same team that brought you Roten Oath, so they're playing off of that. Fast playing, easy to learn. There you go. So easier to learn, faster to play. Two to four players? Okay, okay, 60 minutes. You've got my attention, Leader Games, as someone who owns all of those things now and was just a recent backer of ARCs. You got me. You got me. And the other thing, uh, since I'm filming this for the third time, the pre-order has actually been announced. You can order it from Miniature Market, you can see here, but I believe Leader Games has said that their pre-order will go live August 1st. So take that for what you will there. Now we're going to go over to the hotness. And I'm going to speak out of turn on a couple of these, but it's worth acknowledging. It's worth discussing. Oathsworn. Oathsworn is getting all the rage right now. It's got a 9.2 rating. People are rating it left, right, and center. If you're subscribed to the page like me, you've been seeing stuff literally several times a day pop up on things. The only people that seem to have it, though, in North America are the, I'm assuming, expedited media copies that were sent to all the big channels because I've seen Quackalope, I've seen Board Game Co., and I've seen One Stop Co-op Shop put out stuff within the last week when the rest of us regular crowdfunding backers are still kind of twiddling our thumbs waiting for it. Now, it's in the process of being fulfilled, but it seems like it is going to be one of those hot and heavy, rush to get my content out before everyone else, strike while the iron is hot, and then throw it in the trash bin uh, once uh, it's done. And so the content can also be used by the time the Kickstarter uh, reprint comes around later this year, because that was also announced, but we don't have a date yet. <sighs> People love it. People really like what they're seeing so far. Speculation on how high it's going to go. But what is the general gist going to be? Because when I see all these hot hype videos that are coming out saying this, where does this fall for you six months from now? Where does this fall from you a year from now? And that's the sort of thing that I have been wondering and lacking on when I see especially this huge push right away. How steady is that tide? We've seen it with Arc Nova. Stayed steady. We've not seen it with other things. And so that's my biggest question in this dungeon crawl. Now, true to brand, I'm waiting for my stand ECOP sheet. Yes, I did not get the miniature version. Yes, I don't just say that for the channel. I have a stand -E version coming of this. So deal with it. <laughs> Staying true, folks. Staying true. Next up, actually, two of the next three. And the third one I cut out of my upcoming video because I had to refilm that video from a week or two ago of the upcoming games you can't miss. Because I had to refilm it several times in order to get it, I skipped out on the third one here. But I'm going to put this out there. My top games from 2020, my top games from 2021. Like, I said this game as well as this game earlier this, what, last month? that these were two games that you need to have your eye on. And, you know, I'm a small channel and no one looks at me. And then, all of a sudden, oh, why are both these on the hotness? AEG's The Guild of Merchant Explorers, an upgraded version of Voyages, the Kickstarter where you're going across as a roll and write, uh, mapping out your course. Well, here you're doing it in a one of four maps, as well as, you know, if you don't get down into certain cities, when you restart or create a new round, then you have to, you know, go back to where you were previously. And just overall looked great, looked fabulous. But before I did my video, it was available and now it's sold out. Well, now it's even more sold out because with both these games, Shut Up and Sit Down just put out a little video of upcoming games you can't miss two and this one and space station phoenix about games you should have your eye on well you know they said it so now it's true uh space station phoenix is a reverse engine builder your space station is slowly breaking down you're slowly losing options and 
uh, your engine is slowly becoming worse, if that makes sense, but making harder choices essentially is what you're trying to do. And I actually watched the John Gates Games uh, playthrough learn while you play video that he does. And I looked at it and I said, I'm not gonna like this game. I like the idea of this game. I did not like the actual mechanics. It's gonna be a, you know, a two to three hour game easily. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of these space stations that you're picking and choosing from, depending on where you wanna go and putting your workers on them and you have your own worker area, but then you can go over to the other person's area and you're gonna be navigating the pieces along here because you're gonna have to put your little spacemen out on spacesuits, but then you have aliens that you're gonna be managing and you can only go to certain areas, but then they get reset depending on where you're at and they're the resources that they're gonna cost. It's it's a lot. It is more of a, a traditional heavy, or not heavy, but definitely a little bit heavier than I'm used to Euro style game. And so ultimately after I watched this video, cause I had this literally in my cart on card house, I decided not to get it. And so I didn't get my card house order. And one of the other games in the card house order was, you know, Guild of Merchant Explorers, which I am going to end up with at some point. This is a game that's going to end up in my collection. Cause like I said, the best fund ratio game that I've brought that I've ever bought on Kickstarter from Postmark Games is Voyages, which coincidentally, side rub for them, uh, July 19 is their next game that's going to be coming out in crowdfunding. It's called Aquamarine. Uh, but this is what you need to know from them. And that's why both of these are on the hotness. And these are going to be games that are well received. And especially now that they've gotten the shut up and sit down rub, along with Wormholes, which is the other AEG game that I had my eye on that made the rounds with uh, the hype media folk on social media earlier, I think, what is it, uh, last month, even June, where you're using wormholes to pick up and deliver. Now, a couple people were less, a couple people were more. It, it's, it's novel, it's clever, it's a little bit of pick up and deliver. It's using wormholes in a different way. And it's going to be one of those where I want to see a little bit more. I, I'm just not sure if it's quite for me yet, but it's definitely got the mass appeal and now it's got the, the rub, so you're going to see it get a lot more attention here in the near future. Then we have Amun Re, which is uh, redone. The 20th anniversary edition is over on GameFound. And you can check out the GameFound page to see everything that is going to be coming new from Alley Cat Games in this regard. I mean, it's a deluxified version of it. And when you go over here, it's not really anywhere near what Ra did. Ra, I mean, I, I knew of Ra much more so than Amun Ra. So this is only raising about 60,000 US dollars, which I mean, isn't bad but it clearly shows you that there's a discrepancy between what funds really well and what doesn't. And with GameFound nowadays, I just don't have a clue. Like I would have thought this would be like two or $300,000, but maybe this one just isn't as sought after in terms of, I think, being out of print. And there's a little bit of a discrepancy because over here they have like the statue expansion and then the afterlife expansion. But on the Board Game Geek description page, they have like the four modular expansions. So I'm not sure if only two of them are new, but it's not an inexpensive price, even though it's not terribly different from the previously mentioned Ra, correct? But do you really need miniatures? And maybe that's the disconnect that the miniatures are on this page and that their price point is reflective of that. You want 30 copies. Holy cow. Anyway, so that's why it's on the hotness right now. Next up, we have Stars of Akarios. Stars of Akarios is basically from OOMM Games. If you took X-Wing, uh, the FFG game, and made it into a 4X campaign style game, that's what they're going for in this sense. And it's being delivered to crowdfunding backers right now. I mean, like I said, miniature driven, starship, upgradable, tech tree, character, pilot abilities, as well as the ships themselves as you're, you know, 4Xing. And so is that appealing to you? And as someone who can't get Star Wars Armada played, I don't need a campaign version of Star Wars Armada or X-Wing that I can't get played when I can't get the regular one played. So for me, it was an easy pass at the time. I think people are going to really like it, but I think it's pretty niche within a niche. Now, that being said, since we have seen the, the next two games from uh, OOMM, that stays true to their brand. But I wouldn't be surprised if you see a reprint of this one in the next six months either with relatively um, high praise that it's been getting so far. And it's got an 8.9 on board Geek with 292 ratings. So take that for what you will. Now we have at the top of the hunt Tribes of the Wind from Joachim Tome and of Vincent Dutrait art in case you're again, recognizing the art. Not really sure what to make of this one yet. There's not a whole lot of information and what you're doing is you're playing cards, but the cards you can play or the cards you may be able to play as the description says, may depend on the cards already played, but not the cards face up, but like the backs of the cards that other people have played around them. And your tribes, wind tribes essentially, not Avatar, but you know, sort of a la, where they're cleaning up the pollution of the planet that has been left behind as you go about in this game. 
tile placement, exploring, village building, game ends when somebody builds their fifth village. But that's about all the information we have right now, except for these pretty, pretty pictures. So it's getting a lot of clicks. It's getting a lot of hotness hype. It's getting a lot of that. But it wouldn't be surprised if you don't see this in North America before 2023. So it's going to be one of those as a couple of the other ones that I came across this weekend, including a new Nizia, Knizia, Knizia, Rainer uh, game called San Francisco as well as another one that I forget who it's by, but it's some other designer that you'd probably recognize, uh, Tiletum. So those two games as well that are already being released over in Europe, but and not going to be anywhere anytime soon in North America. So this has that similar vibe to me. The other one similarly is Revive. One to five player rebuilding Civ game with, and this makes it a key point here, no fighting. I mean, you're building, reviving, and trying to relearn uh, new abilities and your tribe's lost techniques and skills uh, over the past 5,000 years. Now, it's a five-game campaign session that they say the main goal is to populate the corners, play, explore, populate, or build a factory are your actions that you're going to be taking on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. Multi-use cards, multi-use factories, end the game when all of the milestone artifacts have been achieved and scored and obtained and then kind of see where things lie so the ambition the scope the scale the description is very enticing but is it gonna actually be able to live up to the hype i'm not really sure yet because again very little information but people are clicking on it because it's pretty to look at so we'll see when more information comes out if it holds up that's it that is the news roundup so I may have to scale it down because I think it's recording in 4K right now. So when I switch between websites, I think there is a little bit of lag. So I may have to reduce that down to like 1080p and see what happens with that. But hopefully this is a video with the sound better with uh, 1080p instead of 720p. So you can stare at my beautiful, not beautiful, uh, unshaven face and see if uh, this is more appealing and we can attract more people. And so we can slowly, organically revive, to use the words of the last game we talked about, channel into a more enticing proposition. That's all I got. Board game news, in a nutshell, all in one space, all in one place, all in one click. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking. If you're not subscribed, give me a click. I guarantee I'll make it worth your time. I got nothing else. I was going to come up with something fancy or some rambling, but uh, I'll save that for another video. Stay classy. Have a great day. Let me know if you like the new format, the new uh, configuration. I'm, I'm working on it. Next up is switching from iMovie to DaVinci so I can add a little bit more graphics. Ooh, tricky, tricky.